Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Dopio Daniel, whatever you like to call me, and I'm here with uh, Bounty, uh, Bryce Lambert. I don't know how else to say. That's who I am. <laughs> and we're back with the what episode of Frame Trap is this? Is episode seven. Number seven? Number seven of the Frame Trap mm -hmm. podcast. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're happy to be here. It's actually a very big day, or a very big week in, in terms of uh, both fighting games and for a lot of other uh, esports, uh, like everywhere, just gaming in general this week. Uh, we, so I have a lot to talk about, and I'm really excited. Um, so yeah, uh, also, we did this a little bit earlier this week, or early in the day, uh, just because uh, yesterday night I was a little bit busy. But uh, yeah, so uh, what are we starting off? Yeah, Evo! Fucking Evo. Evo games announced. Did you watch the presentation? I did actually. It was very weird uh, to have like sets in between each game announcement. I actually was... hated that. I actually hated it. A lot of, a lot of people didn't like that. I remember, but it the... was. What was it? Good. The only set that I felt like was worth watching was the Daruino versus Gobu set, and all the other sets are like, "Who are you?" I mean, like the the Kill Sage played in the Skullgirls one. And stuff like that. And, like, I know the Skullgirls players were very, very good. But it's, like, I'm not a Skullgirls player, so I wasn't that excited for it. And it's, like, and they're only first to two. Yeah. Right? And what made it even worse is that most of the sets were just replays. You know, for the show. So it's, well, like, fair, yeah. so it's, like, these weren't even live sets. And it was just, like, I don't know. It just felt like they were trying to extend the broadcast. For social media impressions. Yeah, I, I I honestly got that vibe as well. I thought some of the sets were cool too, like for the Melty set to have um what is it? Brought um, and uh Scott, um, uh, uh, Musa, uh Vermillion, I believe is his name. And Scott Vermillion, but then the other player, he plays Wolf. Scrum. Um, no, Scrum is the Shiki player. Oh. I, I, I thought I, I thought Vermillion was the other player. No 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 no. Shiki uh Scrum plays Shiki and then I uh, Vlov uh, I think it was Masoma, Masoma, I think, mm -hmm. uh, was playing uh, Vlog. It was a cool, cool set. Those guys are both really good. Uh, and then, I don't know who played... I know it was Darwino and Gobo. That one was pretty cool. Uh, and then Skullgirls was solid, too. I liked watching all of those. I was just... I just wanted to see the game reveals. Uh, and I was kind of like... I, I just... Kind of whatever. Like, I'd rather just, like, see it all at once. Um, I'm more interested in, in, in the announcements, if anything. Like, to see Grand Blue, Dragon Ball... Grand Blue and Dragon Ball at EVO is, like word like this is kind of crazy i didn't think these games would get back in because like gb i mean granted i think grumble fantasy was kind of a, a lock just because like the game never had an evo so it's like I, I, i'm low-key very excited for grand blue even though i know the developers have done like a really shitty job of balancing that game i mean it's it's a really balanced game it's just that like they keep taking out fun features of the game from characters throughout every patch but it's like i'm excited to see that game in an offline setting because one it never had a chance like you were saying and then two, I feel like Grand Blue is the type of game that will create excitement. It, it's like it like goes back to old Street Fighter Four core of like we're going to be walking like this back and forth <laughs> from each other a lot. And when per one person gets touched, people are screaming. Yeah, that's fair. I think I think the game also nowadays is a lot better. Like from what I've been hearing from players, because they they listen to a lot of the uh like the the feedback like the negative feedback about like their patches because they released the patch that was supposed to it kind of felt like the last patch of the game and they they just kind of gutted a lot of the characters and people were like this is kind of weird uh, we don't really like this like this is kind of fucking with the game and then they released another patch which really helped improve that like gave a lot of characters new tools and like helped give back tools that characters used to have which is really cool like having a patch where like you you feel a lot of the character power go up generally is good uh, unless you're a dragon ball fighters player and then you just but uh, <laughs> but actually speaking of dragon ball which is funny um that game has been i want to say doing better but also on the decline in terms of like how players feel about the game i i think i think it's more so, like it's more so like the game is still incredibly fun right everybody who's liked the game still likes the game the issue is is that like you just recently introduced this character that you clearly didn't play test whatsoever at all we all know you didn't play test it you just made the character and came out with it okay and then you came out with the character and now we have johnny 2.0 in dbfz yeah yeah i mean i like bang johnny 2.0 was bang shishigami from 
<laughs> bang bang isn't even that good bang is bang is solid in in blaze blue but it's like he's not like android 21 no i meant like he has the coins or he has like the, the uh, i'll make a video about it so i was like I, i've been thinking the about spikes that. yeah but what? Uh, yeah like i'm honestly i was kind of shocked that they released the character so good in the bbfz i like it. i'm 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 a marvel stan from the day i die so it's like I really do not mind, uh, like, I don't mind there being, like, a sort of, like, a really strong character. I don't play the game, though, a ton, so I wouldn't really know, like, how, like, how the character fares in terms of, like, how it feels to play against her, but I get, I get how people feel, like, okay, the meta's kind of over-centralized, like, it shouldn't really be like this, especially with, like, three point, like, patch 3.5 or sim 3.5, where it was, like, really good, like, you could basically play anybody on the roster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I remember watching the French versus Canada exhibition, and it yeah. was it was very clear that like things were not things were going like really 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 solid for them yeah honestly with uh yeah like a lot of a lot of the like the, a lot of the ways the game has like a lot of the ways that the game's been like presenting itself recently with like the first to tens and uh viva la france and uh also <laughs> <laughs> also just like the way that uh tournaments have been recently too i thought it was pretty cool like obviously online sucks and that's just that's just the way the game is but um yeah, like, I thought the game was doing really well for itself. So to see, like, a lot of the people who've been playing the game for a while being like, I don't really feel like the motivation to play the game is, like, kind of sad. But also, I feel like Evo's going to do a lot to, like, boost people's desire to play the game. And if, I think if there's, like, still a lot of interest, which I'm sure there will be, uh, hopefully a DBFZ2. Copium? Um, th uh, yeah, that's what I was literally about to bring that up. Like, the copium is, is that, like, at Evo, they announce rollback for the game or they announced some form of sequel somehow. Because, like, DBFC was so successful, like... And I don't typically buy all the DLC for fighting games, because that's way too expensive. But I bought yeah. all the DLC for, for DBFC, and I only have, like, 150 hours in that game. So it's, like, I honestly think that, like, they should definitely, like, be pursuing this, like... Let's continue with this through line, because I think it would be a shame if DBFC as a series would just go down as, like... Yeah, we just made one and then never updated it. Yeah, I I mean it would be in a very similar vein to like actually there aren't too many anime. I mean I guess Persona, Persona had like multiple iterations at the very least. I mean as much as it like tapered off near its like end years, it's a very different game. Like the, the very different way that they built the game, right? And it's like to have this game where it's like okay, here are all these base characters. Here's like a bunch of DLC. It sold super well. The game sold super well. The DLC sold super well. Like it'd be kind of a shame just to not like end it off at like okay it's on this like really weird version that people aren't really like a big fan of right and then just like have it there you know it, it would be just kind of odd um but yeah i'm hoping i'm hoping for that but i'm I'm also happy that like uh that the game is even having a presence at evo in the first place i'm also happy that uh, uh grand blue fantasy versus is there um i'm my thing that i'm the most happy about easily is Skullgirls though that is oh yeah 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 i definitely I agree even though i'm not a skull girls player i think it's awesome that finally like the off the online version went went swell. Uh, finally, they're getting the offline version, right? No excuses. This is offline. Let's see how the competition. Like just like what Tasty Steve said. Like let's see how it runs. And I'm excited for it. I'm not gonna watch probably, but I'm just happy that the community's getting their their fix. I'm gonna definitely watch it. I'm I'm a big Skullgirls fan in terms of like watching the game and like like just playing the game. I'm not super serious about it competitively, but I really I really enjoyed the game. And, um, for me, what's, what's, well, it's kind of funny that, like, uh, if you know the lore in 2000 and, I think it's 2006 or 2013, no, it's 2013, uh, fucking. Yeah, yeah, uh, when, when they got beat by the Smash community. Yeah, now Smash is gone and Skullgirls is back. <laughs> Skullgirls is back. Oh, can we talk uh, about that, by the way? The, the, we, we okay. should. Okay, so, yeah. I kind of hated what Sony did. Uh, after they heard from Nintendo about how, like, I don't know what happened behind the scenes, but I have a, I have a pretty big guess of what happened. Uh, they pointed the guns at Nintendo and said, it's Nintendo's fault that we can't run the game. But in my head, I think that they, that Nintendo just raised the price of the licensing fee because Sony can afford it. Right? Maybe. And, and then they did what, uh, Sony, Sony did with, uh, what's it called sony did it with spider-man remember uh they they said it's it's marvel's fault that we can't have spider-man oh, Spider yeah 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 because they won't pay for the licensing fee 
right? So it's like, I'm thinking that they just came up with that statement where it's like, it's Nintendo's fault to just sit, point guns at Nintendo and make them lower the licensing fee, which I think is kind of stupid. I mean, we, we that can is the world we live in. Yeah, we can't confirm though either way, right? Like that's like a, I mean, like at the end of the day, I think it's just, it, it is still dumb on Nintendo's part just because like, what do you lose from being at Evo? Like nothing. What do you gain? Like hundreds of thousands of people like viewing your game, promoting your game competitively, wanting to play your game competitively. Like why would you not be there? It doesn't make any fucking sense. Plus you got to run ads on the Evo stream. You got to like, like, it's just, it, I don't know. I, I feel like it's a weird thing for them to even, even in the first place, even if they were to have just raised the price, right. Of like the, like licensing it out. And yeah, it would be a dick move for Sony to just like blame Nintendo at that point. It's like, you know, like, I, I mean, it's kind of your call not to pay that, right? Um, it's just kind of like, okay, well, why would you do that in the first place? Like, you may as well just have your game at Evo. Like, the, there's literally no loss for you. If anything, there's a big financial gain to, like, to be had there, right? I don't um, know. Yeah. The, the other big, big contenders for Evo that are kind of interesting are MK11. I know oh, yeah. a lot of people in the Mortal Kombat community were like, really? Huh? What? I'm I'm sh I'm sure that that MK's spot was supposed to go to Smash, right? But then Smash yeah. didn't come in, right? So then they were just like, let's just put MK11 in there. So MK11's in there, and nobody thought that was going to happen. I'm sure there's going to be an announcement of the next quote unquote injustice or MK variety at Evo. So that's yeah. pretty big. That'll be really cool, and I think I think like for the NRS players, it's probably gonna be a, a like a breath of fresh air to have a new because I know a lot of people don't like uh, MK11. That's for... what I've been told. It's is it, supposedly it's like very slow and like methodical compared yeah. to older games. And uh, what was what, what else was I mean to think? Uh, there's like a couple things I've been thinking about recently too. Like firstly, I don't know if this is the first Evo like this, but is this like one of the first Evos with like three anime games? No, uh, there was the the Evo that had Guilty Gear Exert. Had BB Tag, Blaze Blue, uh, uh, Central Fiction, I believe, Exerd, and then it also had another anime game. I think, I'm not sure what anime game it was. I think it was. But a, it had four anime games at one Evo? Oh, it was Unis. That's what it was. And it was so it was Evo. Uni, normal BB, BB Tag, and then Exerd? Or was it just one BB game, Uni, and Exerd? It was. I think that. I think the list was actually. Sh uh, not sure what the list. Was, I don't think. Right? You got, I don't I, oh, oh, DBFC. DBFC was on the list. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's true. Yeah. It wasn't exit. It was DBFC. So it was four games. Yeah, that's interesting. Actually, I no, because I remember people talking about like like you know about old Evo where like yeah it was like really hard to get like two anime games in an Evo because like yeah Guilty Gear was kind of a lock but like. But all the other anime games were hard to get in. Like, yeah. Like, Blaze Blue had their one year, I think, like, uh, early on. But then yeah. it never really came back, even though they had new new versions. Um, yeah. But Guilty Gear was there, like, every other year. You Persona know, had, was, like, like... Right? Yeah, Persona had two for each version of the game. And then, uh, I think that's it for anime uh, games. So it's, like... The, and the Unix. Biggest, yeah, the biggest thing to understand is that... Uh, Street Fighter Five dropped the ball, and now this is the world that we we live in. Yeah. Like, not, in the, not, not to say that Street Fighter Five is a bad game still. It's I actually think it's a wonderful game now, but it's like at the start of Street Fighter Five, it really dropped the ball. So now all the other games can be represented at Evo instead of just Capcom games. Yeah, and I'm, I, that's actually a good thing. Like, it's a really good thing that uh that like anime game supremacy, but like also just like you know, uh, it, it's just good to see. I'm happy to see like so many anime games at Evo, and I. I'm happy also to see like all the like the, the games that I, I know are there like are gonna be there like Tekken, Street Fighter, Strive, KOF. Like I'm just happy that those games get like their chance to like be played on in an offline setting because a lot of those games haven't had good like all, either a haven't don't have good online or b haven't had like a ton of really good international like competition. So it's really good to be able to see that out of like. You. I might go this year actually. I'm debating. I might may or may not. It uh i'm just i, sad I that might go because i used to live in texas and it was like basically nobody went in texas because it was just expensive but since i live in utah now a lot of people in utah go to evo because it's you can literally drive there yeah right so it's like I, i'm thinking i might go if, but it's if, like 
uh, I don't know how much uh, it's going to cost overall. So that's that's a big thing because like if you want to get the like if you want to get a hotel at the Mandalay Bay, it's a lot of money. The drive is a lot of money. Obviously, gas. Um, it, it's oh just, yeah, gas it's, prices are insane right now. Yeah, it's it, especially in California. It's it's liberal paradise. You know, we're fucking. <laughs> I'm trolling, but like it's a lot. Of, it's a lot of it's a lot of money for gas. Um, but yeah, I think I mean. Depending on, like, you know, obviously financial stuff, I think I'd be totally down to go, and it'll be really, really fun to, like, be at a big offline tournament. I'm just sad there's no Persona main, ga- main game. I know, it's stupid <laughs> as fuck. But I but told like, you. I told you, on, I told you it's not going to happen. So, uh, quit the quit with the Hopium. No TO is going to host it. I, I want to see my, my, my boy. I want to see Lord and I fucking win. The, I want to see him win Evo again. Come on, man. Oh, my God. Oh, man. This is tragic. I want to I, I see the Margaret on the big stage. I'm like, okay, it's whatever. I think they'll probably have a side event. Um, and um, Evolution, if, if you're watching the podcast. Uh, no, no they, okay. that, there's definitely going to be a side event because at the during the, the show, they, they said that, like their casuals area is literally oh, yeah. going to be the size of the combo breaker. Like the entire event of combo breaker. Wait, really? Yeah. Like, the, the casuals area as a whole. As a whole, the casuals area is bigger than combo breaker itself. Right? So So it's like... Basically, any side event game, you're going to be able to run it. Like, Dude, that's sick as fuck. Yo, okay. So for those of you that don't know, Evo's main... I think the one main criticism that everyone can say about it is you that... You can't get casuals in. There's no casual setups anywhere. So if you want to run casuals, you either have to go into some random guy's hotel room. Which, which is sketchy because like the cops typically come in and are like... Keep the voice down. Or yeah. I'm kicking everybody out. And then, like, then they kick everybody out anyway. Because yeah. it's FGC, folks. Exactly. And it's just like, okay, well, I don't, we, we don't want to deal with that. But also, like, just, like, being able to play casuals there is really cool. They usually have a couple arcade cabs, which are really dope. But it's, like, one, like one or two or three. Like, I remember there's always a third strike cab. There's always, like, a Persona cab and stuff like that. But there's not, like, a ton. I'm really happy that they're expanding the casuals. Area. I heard something about the arcade area being bigger, which is awesome, obviously. Yeah, it's way bigger. Way bigger. Yeah. And but like, uh, casuals, sick as fuck. They're all. also giving everybody water bottles when you check in. Nice. Yeah, so it's like it's like the two main criticisms of Evo are out the door, you know. That's fucking amazing. Let's go. But, it's, oh, what's up? But the the real question is, what announcements do you think are going to happen at Evo? Oh fuck! Now, okay, t- time to get your tinfoil hats on. I mean, you know, don't get some. Well, I'll be get, right back. Get the tinfoil on. You know, be ready to. Let, let's hear the conspiracy theory. Um. Okay. So. Rev three. <laughs> That's not happening. Get the hell out. Get out. You're out. That's out. That's not happening. <laughs> I can believe. My. Get come out. On. Out. Alex, out. Alexis, you know what the people want. No, honestly though. Um. I the feel snipers, like gonna... you see the window right there? Daisuke Ishimutari's <laughs> snipers are right there. They're ready to oh, shoot. God. It's like the Breaking Bad scene with like the laser dog. Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, man. But yeah, um, no, for real, I think there there is definitely going to be rollback announced for at least one game. Just because... Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Like, like I literally really... saw on Twitter, Shinny was like, now it's time to work on the next one. But then he had to like double back and say like it was the one that we it was already announced, guys. But but he could have slipped up, you know. Oh <laughs> man, he slipped up. Oh. He put all of Twitter in the shinies. He's like, I- I'm gonna remove the shinny zone from X. <laughs> no, never, <laughs> never. No, but uh, I, honestly, my hope is that X like Rev Two rollback or something to that effect. That would be awesome. Um, I think for for both of us, we, we can agree that would be like the dream. Um, or I mean, Rev Three would be cool. They're not making that. That's just, yeah. That's not that's, happening. Rev Three is not happening. That's the fucking hardest cope. I no, absolutely not. But yeah, like Rev Three rollback. Rev Two rollback would be great. Um, DBFZ rollback also, I think, is a possibility. Or maybe DB, DBFZ. Two, I think. Like I think said. honestly, you think if they went to a next one, it would be DBFZ. Like it's not going to be Exert. It's going to be yeah. DBFZ. It would be weird for it to be Exert. It's like as 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 the entire Exert community drinks that. We are the black sheep. Uh, we, are, <laughs> we are the black sheep of the anime community. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, that, I'm thinking also, uh, probably like a new, uh, probably reveals for DNF Duel as well. I think that would be kind of weird. A I DNF mean, or, Duel release date announcement would make sense. Yeah, because, I mean, well, 
If it's not already out by then, too. Did they already announce the release date? I don't think they did. Do you know? I don't think they have. It's summer release. 2022. I think that's the release date. Like, the work. Yeah, they just date. said 2022. Yeah, like, it's definitely going to be a release date announcement for DNF Duel. Yeah. If the game... The game might actually come out before then, as well, because they did say... I remember them saying summer. So it might be out that at that point. But I'm mm -hmm. not... Again, I'm not super clear. And it might be just later in the year, and they'll, they'll announce it. Which would be... It makes sense. Um, I also think for, um, which, um, Million Arthur Arcane of Blood 2. Mm -hmm. Square Enix, get on that, my guys, all right? Fuck Arcane of Heart, fuck all that other bullshit, all right? You guys are making Million Arthur 2. I'm no, waiting. That's not I'm happening. I'm waiting, dude. That's not happening. Also, uh, to whoever the fuck is, uh, to Pokimane, please make sure there is a Million Arthur Arcane of Blood side event at Evolution. If I'm going, I need to be able to play Million Arthur Arcane of Blood. All right, that game needs to be there. If you it's think not, the platform's big enough for this. No. <laughs> <laughs> I wish it was. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I fucking wish I could just subtweet like in the evil staff. Like, and she know. <laughs> but it's, uh, the, the announcements that I want are Project L information. I think yeah. it's going to happen. I almost thought it was going to happen during the Evo announcement because. I'm on I'm on copium right now. Literally every video game that I'm involved in, I'm on super copium right now. I'm literally bedman, but I'm hooked up to copium. But uh, so like I almost thought it was going to happen during the Evo announcement because Tom Cannon was in the background playing chess and he was on his laptop. And I know he he used to own Evo. Okay, I know that, but I can dream. Okay, so I think they're still, think they're still involved in the. In management of the event i just don't think they're like owners of the company anymore. yeah uh i think it's more so hado who's like doing most of the management oh for oh yeah well there you go because uh he he quit twitch for this oh then yeah in that case it's his event all right add the hado you know what to do you already run the best mm -hmm. event in the fighting game community okay just give me million arthur please okay but please. like uh it's simply project l more announcements on project l there's there's one guy in my local fgc and I keep I keep posting about Project L because I'm excited for it, right? Every single time I post about it, he's like, he's super nihilistic, and he's like, "There's nothing getting announced. Stop getting excited." And I'm like, "Why do you have to kill my vibe, dog? <laughs> <laughs> you literally, I'm like all the way up here. You brought me all the way down here. <laughs> like, oh, but I was just like, why you gotta do that, man? Come on, I just." I want to be happy. Yeah, yeah. I, I made a joke in there that about, like, I'm on Copium, by the way, but I think there's going to be an announcement during the Evo announcement. And he was like, there's going to be no announcements this year. He straight up said that, word for word. There's no announcements this year. And then I was like, what do you mean? They straight up said that there was going to be two announcements. I Personally, I, I mean, I wouldn't be shocked if there was, like, nothing super concrete at Evo, but it would be weird if there wasn't anything. Like, I would just be odd. if they Well, just... it, it, the biggest thing that I think they should do is, like, make an e e Evo announcement, because Evo is, like, middle of the year, right? And then you make an announcement in, like, November, December, right before everybody goes on break for Christmas, right? And then, yeah. I'm this is, this is the development pipeline that I think for the game. This might be major copium. Be ready. I already said I'm on major copium. Then, then they do a release of the game quarter one, quarter two. Of the next year. So it's like, that could be anywhere from the first three months of 2022 to June of 2020. That would be Very sick. Soon. Um, I don't... I mean, yeah, that's... that's. I, I don't want to say that's hard copium because they didn't just say 2023. And... If, like, if you think about it, like, okay, well, they had, like, a working version of the game that, like, they could show in, they did. like, 20, what was it? Was it late 2021 that they showed the game? Yeah. Yeah. It was, like, I, I would be shocked if it wasn't, like, quarter two of 2020. That would be, like, it was, like, quarter three or quarter four. I'd be, like, this is kind of weird. Like, it's kind of late, but, I mean, cool. Like, they're polishing the game. But, yeah, I, I think, honestly, I feel like it's kind of realistic. I think, at the very least, like, we can exclusively say, yeah, like, Project L is probably going to get an announcement. Street Fighter Six, probably rollback. Street Fighter Six announcement, yeah, rollback, yeah. And um, what else was it? It was like, maybe, maybe, hopefully, Rev Two rollback. If not, probably like DBF Zero. Uh, I think a new Tekken season will get announced. 
too. Because I don't think season or new Tekken game. New Tekken season. I don't think we're close to Tekken eight yet. Remember, Tekken seven came out in like twenty fourteen, and it was in arcades for like six years before that. Right? Six years. It was in because it was on like practically PS four hardware in arcades. Right? No, it was, it was only there for like two years. Well, it was, I know the game launched twenty sixteen in, in, in on console. Well, it was in arcades for quite a long time. I remember it being in arcades for quite. It was, a long like, time. It was like two years. It was like two to four years. Okay. Something in that. So it's like, I don't think we're we're there yet for Tekken Eight. Like Tekken Eight is still going to be like quite a while, and I honestly think that Tekken Seven is still popular enough to just come out with another season of they, DLC. They could do that. They could very well. The only problem is, I think they want to maybe make the next better than it is already. I think a lot of fighting game developers are realizing that like a lot of their games are just not like not Harada. Yeah. Have you listened to his podcast? <sighs> Look, Have man. You? Come on. He, he doesn't want to improve the netcode at all. He doesn't care about us guy genes. Look, I know the rollback is three, but maybe he wants to make it four. Or who knows? Maybe even ten. <laughs> maybe ten. Ten rollbacks. I'm too powerful. I don't, I don't know what that means, but maybe. I, I hope it makes it better. No, but for real, I, I think maybe there's like pressure on the devs or on at least publisher to be like hey people are playing these other games that have rollback maybe there's like a reason like people there's a ton of people playing strive right now there's a ton of people playing like kof maybe we should put rollback in our game maybe we should try to develop a new version if we can't put it in tech and seven or maybe we should try to put it in tech. i think i think the logical decision would be to make a new game and try to fit rollback into it but um yeah i think i think one way or another we'll get some news for tekken i would be shocked if we didn't get anything because it's been a little bit uh, Street Fighter Six, like we said, is that's just nothing for that game, and I, it would be weird for them not to announce something at Evo. Um, you roll back, and then Project L, and then maybe a new. I don't think a new game. Like I don't think there'll be like a new game. Other, and this is this is my this is my hope. Okay, okay. here's the copium. Marvel Four. Mm-hmm. Marvel Holy! 4, Did you just go to the hospital yesterday and was like? I need all of your copium. <laughs> I need all of it. And then you what fucked the it all before. The Give it to me. <laughs> Marvel 4. I, hear me out on this one, okay? Okay. I have no concrete reason as to why I think <laughs> this is I just want it to happen. It'll happen, okay? We need to figure out what happened to Thanos after he got the Satsui no Hado. If we, There's no conclusion to that story. Remember, the Satsui no Hado can even conquer death. He was about to beat the shit out of his wife. Well, we gotta figure out where the we gotta we gotta find the Thanos divorce arc. That's gonna be the lore for Marvel Four. We gotta get there, dude. I can't believe I associate with you. <laughs> no, I would actually be so. It would be so fucking hype. I feel like it's like, like I mean, granted they're working on SF Six right now, and maybe it wouldn't be like that. Maybe it'd be like a new Dark Stalkers, or maybe they like re-release Marvel Two or something. But oh, like, wait, oh, wait, wait, Dark, Darkstalkers is not dead. <laughs> just, give a new, just make a new Darkstalkers Capcom. But anyway. No, like, it's not going to happen. Look, I'm just Even hoping for a, a new, like a, a, a retro Capcom game or like a new new Capcom game based on a pre-existing IP to like actually exist. I, a new Darkstalkers game and a new Marvel game would be sick. I'm hoping for Marvel 4. I want there to be a new Marvel game. I'd play the shit out of that. Um, you, you, you know CBS 3 has has a higher likelihood of happening that's than not Marvel happening. 4. Bryce, that's not happening. It has not a higher you're, likelihood. You're stealing my copium, Bryce. Stop that, dude. This I is a new copium. Part. This is a new copium. They just did a partnership in the fighting... The King of Fighters gotcha. Game? Yeah. Where, where's the Marvel partnership? Nowhere. Look, man. Maybe it's it's under wraps, you know? They have to pay Robert Downey Jr. a lot of money to give his mouth shut. He's a big Marvel fan. I saw him play. I, who was at Chinatown Fair when Marvel 2 came out? It was actually Robert Downey Jr. Along with Pokemon. That's what. They're all fans. I'm telling why, you. Why are you mentioning Pokemon? What? Pokemon yeah, ain't a fan. No, because the, cause the, you never seen the Chinatown Fair picture with like Pokemon in the corner? I love that picture. That picture is amazing. That's how you know she's an OG. Uh, anyway. <laughs> getting so Anyways, far. Uh, since you got on your copium, my my yeah, copium, talk, talk, my talk, copium talk. is is that Project L gets more concrete details at Evo, and then we get a beta announcement. 
Because Riot likes to do betas, so... That's fair. I... I would actually be really sick. I would be surprised if it... Yeah. Like, they do, like, to, like make a lot of beta, beta versions like, have people test them. That's actually a good idea. I oh. mean, they already had a beta version that they had tested, remember? They asked the community for people to come to California and... Wasn't that, like, a pre alpha version of the game? It was, like, a private testing. We don't know what kind of build it was. That's fair. I, I don't know if I... Did I actually sign up for that? I don't know I, if I signed I'm, up for I'm sure it was a build that was further along than the build that we saw in the development videos. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know, it only no, had, like, eight characters, I'm betting. Yeah. I mean, Say I'm happy Jam. that they have... Say Jam, if you're already. watching Say Jam, I know you went to that event. Okay? <laughs> you need to tell me what characters you were in that build. Okay, my DMs are open. Okay, <laughs> you just you just put in the message request, and I'm there. You know, I actually spoke to Ghostcrawler the other day. You know, yeah, I I got connections, Say Jam. So if you need help to get into Riot Games, you just come to me, my dog. Let me know. <laughs> God. Um, but anyway, that's that's it for our Evo. Do you have any uh, more thoughts for the Evo? No, I I've been waiting two years to go, and I'm I'm just really happy that they're finally it's finally a thing that's finally happening, and I'm, I might be able to attend and just be there. Um, it's been a dream, and I'm like just I'm just happy that Evo's back, um, and better than ever. Hopefully, um, yeah. Any any last thoughts about that either on your end? Nope, nope, not really. I, I I just wanted to say that I'm excited for Project L, and that's it. Hype. All right, talk. Walk me through this next one because this is you. This is okay. All you. Okay, so I want to get a little serious here. Okay. Uh, not no jokes. Uh, Jayuna was legitimately an asshole on Twitter the other day. He's 38 years old. Okay, uh, so I've I've been a good friend uh, of Tempest Tim's for a long time. Okay, and he is a Kokonoa specialist, Kokonoe specialist from Blaze Blue Central Fiction, right? So he knows. He's kind of like my counterpart. You know, where, like, I know everything about Bedman, he knows everything about Kokonoe, right? And he didn't, like, throw Jayuna under the bus or anything. He was just a little bit annoyed that Jayuna's beginner's guide didn't go over, like, specific topics that were kind of, like, important for the development of the character, right? And he expressed this on Twitter, right? He didn't at Jayuna whatsoever. He just expressed these thoughts on Twitter. And then Jayuna... Remember, he's 38 years old. He then, quote, retweeted it and said, I beat you with my Naoto doing 2K combos. Or like 2.5K uh, BNBs with my day one Naoto. Yeah, and it's like... It, and it, I told it, him to stick to training mode and then let me teach other people how to start playing the game. Yeah, yeah, and it's like... it's. He didn't uh, see. See now, now it would be one thing if Tim came out of like the corner swinging at Jayuna and saying like, "Oh, your entire content is dog shit" or yeah. anything. It, it was like if you read T Tempest Tim's like Twitter thread, it's just like small little nitpicks. They just like he he's happy that like these things are being made, but he just like he wishes that he went over these specific things that uh, Kokonoe is about, right? So it's like. It's just so ridiculous that when your platform, like Jayuna's platform, remember, it's like 10 times larger than Tempest, Tempest Tim's. Like, he has way bigger following, right? So yeah. it's like, for him to just quote retweet and then say like, oh, I'm, I could, I beat you with my day one Naoto. And now all of a sudden, if you look at the replies to, to Tempest Tim's thread, it's a bunch of people calling him out for not making uh, beginner content. When in reality, Tempest Tim has been making beginner content for Kokonoe for six years. He literally yeah. created the dust loop for Kokonoe. He also created multiple Google Drive docs for Kokonoe. He made so much stuff for Kokonoe. And then, like, just because of one quote tweet, and remember, this is the power of Jayuna's platform, everybody now discredits uh, Tempest Tim, right? And remember... Jayun is 38 years old. Did he really need to come out of the gate swing at Tempest Tim? I think I think age is like a, a non-factor here. I think like any whoever you are, if you have a platform, you're, you're or, totally right. You're totally right. Age is a non non. It, like regardless of if he's 38, 70, or 16, this is just not like the way you act towards yeah, anyone. It, it, it's also ridiculous because it's like 
it, it's ridiculous to discredit Tempest because he's been doing this type of content for years, literal years, and it's like you just want to go destroy him for, and it, it, it really felt like he wanted to like he did this for impressions, you know, like social media impressions, like light yeah. the fire to create some people to click click on your links, right? Yeah. So, yeah, fuck Jayuna. Even though yeah. I I like some of your videos, but I don't like yeah. this. Don't do this. This is you being a, a asshole. Yeah. To to be fair, I will I will I I can I can in some way understand sort of where you could like where you could kind of have this opinion, but it's it's not really I, no matter what, how you spin this, I don't think Jayuna like this is just fucking stupid. You don't just like respond to someone like that because it's I can understand how someone could criticize maybe Tempest's points, right? Like, okay, yeah, Pokanoe is like, there's a lot of stuff that he went, he didn't go over in that video that he probably, it would probably be do a lot of good for Pokanoe players, especially someone who's like trying to get into the character in depth to go over, right? But the video is for inher inherently for someone who's like brand new to Blaze Blue and brand new to the character. So it makes sense that you would try to simplify it as much as possible to give someone like a, a simple game plan to like kind of go with, right? Granted, a lot of the stuff that T Tempest Tim is saying is like, hey, these tools are good in these situations. Talk about how, like, you know, this tool is a good ant here. This would be good for, for this, right? This would be good for that. Just so some, someone has something to come back to so that they can like continue adding on to that, right? I get that. The problem here is this is not how you fucking respond to a tweet when someone criticizes. With a genuine, like, Tempest Tim was not being an asshole. He's like, look, I'm just let down. I would I would have liked for this video to do this. And Juno was like, fuck you. You're yeah, garbage. Yeah, literally, it's you're garbage. Asshole. It's like... And then, 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 then his followers, because, like, they're sort of a hive mind, like, then go and attack Tempest Tim in, like, the most ignorant of ways. Like, they call him out for not making, like, beginner content even though he's been doing that for years, and then they, like, call him out for not being good, even though, like, he is actually, like, one of the best Kokonoli players on the planet. Like, it's just ridiculous. It's it's a little bit... I want to say, like... Yeah, it's just... It's just... It's just fucking... It's just shitty. I, I I mean, there's not really a better way to put it. Like, I don't think that that, like, that kind of behavior is, like, even reasonable, like, at all, in terms of, like, Juna's, uh, Juna's way of talking about stuff. And, I mean, like... To a lot of people that like, you know, there's a lot of people who aren't, don't have a big platform. Maybe don't like, you know, aren't as well known in terms of like the broader FGC. Because there's like a lot more people in the FGC now that, you know, just watch YouTubers and kind of just play the game casually. That put in a lot of work. They put in a lot of time. They put in a lot of dedication. To try to make the game an easier and better place for someone to come into and want to learn. Right? I know for me, if it wasn't for Bryce and if it wasn't for GC Ocean, it wasn't for Kenji, it wasn't for all these other people who like, do their best to try to make sure that you know let's say Bedman players right that's where i can speak to have a place that they can go to to learn and understand the character and do better right then i would not be playing the character and i would have a much harder time being able to like enjoy the character for what he is right and i know that's the same for a bunch of different characters a bunch of different games not even anime games period right and so to see someone who who understands that like i'm i'm 100 percent sure juna understands that and he's like because he's been in the scene to see him acting in that way is very, like, like, it's kind of like a respect your roots, man. Like, you came from the same place that these people came from. You can't just be out here saying that bullshit, right? And also, it plays into the whole thing about meritocracy. Like, oh, I beat you with the shut the yeah, fuck up. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, like that's, that's the biggest thing that I'm like, really, dog? And, like, even if they did play, like, it would have been, like, a Japan to, like, I don't know where Tempest 10 lives, but it's... It's a Japan to America connection, which is like ridiculous. It doesn't fucking matter. Like, who cares if who cares what the set count? Was? It doesn't fucking matter. If if someone gives you a criticism, a genuine, actually, like, okay, I, I respect your opinion. Here's what I think you should do. For once on the internet, the one time someone will actually fucking do that, and this is how you respond, son. Come on, man. Like, what are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? You people should be cherishing people like that. Their replies or whatever, and. You should have people. You should be happy to have people like that coming at you, like, "Hey, this is what I think you should do better next time." Bro, just be respectful about it. They don't mean no. They don't mean any bullshit about uh, by it, you know. And well, you can. What's up? What's even weirder about this situation is that I can totally see, like, if this was like a say jam criticism or like a different content creator criticism, I could see the the content creator having a dialogue with that person and saying, like, "This was the purpose of the video that I wanted to run." Yeah. I think just Juna handled this so poorly. It's like, 
I mean, it's whatever. I, I, at the end of the day, um, like, I know people will end up using and being really happy with the stuff that Tempest Tim makes for Coconut Eye. And it's just sad that, like, he has to be treated in that way. It's just shitty. It's like, what the fuck? Like, he didn't do anything wrong. But all these people are not at his throat. But, yeah, hopefully this stuff blows over and he doesn't have to deal with it for longer. It's just, but, it's yeah, kind of- uh, I just wanted to make note of that. And uh, since we both have platforms, I just wanted to use my platform to be like, hey, I was being yeah. shitty. Absolutely, yeah. I, I totally, I, I respect it. So, on top of talking to me about tweets, now tell me, I, this shocked me, because I, I didn't fucking know about this. And I know that StarCraft patches do not happen that frequently, but apparently there's a new StarCraft patch out. I need, yes, tell me. It's, actually, it's actually really small, but there's one change that's really game-changing. Like, it's mostly, like, number adjustments of, like, specific units. Like, for example, the Protoss shield battery, it got its base energy nerfed, like, cut in half, basically. And then, like, uh, they did this for a lot of them. But the biggest change that they did was Queens can no longer use the ability Transfusion when off Creep. Okay? I have. So Creep is a thing that uh, Zerg will use to cover the map to make their units faster. And they regenerate health faster on uh, Creep. Right? Okay. Yeah. So the And Queens typically put down these things called Creep Tumors that will grow the Creep. Right? And, like, what makes this change really good is that, like, a lot of uh, uh, armies, typically in the early game or to mid game, will struggle to push into creep. Because uh, when you push into creep, you have to clear the creep tumors, so then they have less creep to use. And then you also have to uh, fend off the, the queens, of course, because the queens, transfusion is the ability that will heal your units. Mm, okay. And so it's like. Now, when you're running away from the the queens and they're off creep and they're they're moving in aggressively because queens are a good unit till like the end of mid game, right? They do a lot of damage even typically without upgrades, right? So it's like this unit does a lot of damage. It comes off a of creep where supposedly it's weaker and it can still heal its its units, right? So yeah. watching watching high level Zerg players typically. Uh, whenever a person pushes into creep and then they run out to stop the creep push, right? They'll chase them with their queen army, right? Because typically you'll yeah. have like about 12 queens or so. And they'll all just heal each other. And it's like, it's actually so obscene. And it's like in the mid game, a lot of races don't have enough firepower to just blast through the queens. So you'll just have to like, you have to play this game of chicken where the queens are slow, but you can run around in circles around them all day, but you're not doing enough damage to kill them. Ah, uh, okay. So it's, it's, it's just like a really obnoxious part of the game where there's not really a clear way to like interact with it. It's just like you have to either A, not interact with it, or B, have like a, uh, like a, like just scale hard enough. Oh, basically it's just don't interact with it. That's the only yeah, 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 yeah. Which, which is a bad thing because then it makes it so that like, hey, if Zerg gets to the mid game, what are you going to do about the mid game? And then like most races are like, I don't know. <laughs> which which is dumb. So, but like like for example, the past IEM Katowice, uh was a grand finals of two Zergs, and the top eight had like I think six Zergs in oh. it. So it's like it's clear that Zergs are like really imbalanced right now. Like I tried to look for Protoss because I typically like watching Protoss games because that's what I play, and like I just couldn't find any. Like it was only Trap who made top eight, I think, with Protoss. So. I assume it was like one Terran, one one Protoss, and then like six Zerg. It was. I think it was two Terran, one Protoss, and then the rest were Zerg. So it's five Zerg. Oh okay. Huh. Yeah, I I remember talking to you about it, like how uh, Zerg is actually like the like like not by far and away, in, but it's like they're strong enough to the point where it's like very clear that they're like the strongest race. In the game. Yeah, yeah, they're they're the strongest ga- race in the game. Like they they still have distinct wing- weaknesses, just like all the other races. But the issue is, is that uh, the creep that we talked about gives vision to yeah. Zerg, so it makes us oh, like a constantly spreading pool of vision, basically. Yes, yes. So, oh. like, so, like, typically a big thing about uh, StarCraft is seeing scouting, right? So it's like if your opponent's army has to eventually push into creep, right, and all your units get movement speed buff on creep then it's super easy to just adapt your positioning and just move yeah. your units around. And, like, super early on, because typically it takes about 20 seconds to go across the map. So it's like, 
it, yeah. it, it just it's just a clear mechanical it's kind of like shotgun stance on Elfelt where it's like no matter how you nerf the character no matter what this race is always going to be good because of the way they designed creep yeah like the fundamental strategy behind the character is so strong that like even if you like even if you try to mess with the numbers it doesn't really matter because the character is always going to be a lot stronger um how do they try to respond to that how do they fix it so are they just nerf well, the healing the, the um, biggest the biggest thing you have to understand is that uh a lot of the the for uh, forces for zerg are all ground forces right whereas yeah. the other races will have very strong air forces not to say that that zerg doesn't have strong air forces it's just that like their air forces are used for different purpose like for example terran will have the medevac and the medevac will can pick up units off the ground oh. And then drop them off, right? So, you, so, so you can outmaneuver a Zerg army very easily because they're typically very slow, right? Yeah. Or for example, uh, the Protoss armies are very air armies are very strong because you have phoenixes, void rays, uh, carriers, and then you have the mothership, right? And like all these together create like a gigantic death ball that will just destroy anything that they come across. Oh, that just sounds sick as fuck. Yeah, the Protoss are sick. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> it's just like float up a race. ball of death that just like sweeps over a landscape. Well, what's even cooler is that the mothership causes all other air units to become cloaked. So you oh, have shit. to have you have to have true sight vision to kill them, and then uh, they also have an a, ability called black hole, where you shoot out a black hole, and literally all the units become like this, and then you just kill them all. Yeah, it's just in one place. You just drops. Yeah, that's sick as fuck. Oh, yeah. So, they have ways of responding to it, but it's just that, like, they try to adjust, like, they, they use this patch to try, kind of try to adjust the fact that like, Zerg was really, really powerful despite all that. They also nerfed uh, Lurkers, which is another a Zerg unit, which is a unit that will burrow underground and then shoot spikes, and the spikes are lethal. Jeez. Yeah, so they I'm nerfed big. those units, too. So, is the game in a lot more of a balanced spot right now, or is it just kind of people are trying to figure out how the game it's more so they're trying to figure it out but like in my opinion it's a little bit more balanced because that queen issue has been an issue for years like i remember watching Serral back in 2019 abusing this this queen feature of being able to transfuse off of creep and like it just was very oppressive back then it's it's good that they removed it out of the game uh the lurker change was just because they were overtuned and they were honestly killing things way too quickly like you could get a one spike out, and if it touched an army, you killed, like, three basic units very quickly. Holy shit. Wait, one spike? Yeah, well, the way the spikes work is that it's, like, one, two, three, and then big spike. Oh, okay. Yeah. Holy shit. That's crazy. So, oh, well, all right. Well, that's actually really interesting. I like, I like how StarCraft actually does patching, in the same way that I like kind of how Dota's been, where it's, like, very short patch or very like big patches like spread out through the year or like spread out like over a couple years or something like that so like a game has time to develop that's really interesting that's actually really really cool um i will if you know i mean if college isn't a bitch uh dota and starcraft are like on my list of like things that i need to get into so yeah you know? uh pretty big but but the, the weirdest thing about the patch is that, like, the, the devs and the dev blog specifically said, like, we work with the community to make this patch. Oh, that's sick. That's right? actually awesome. It's so, that's really weird coming from Blizzard. Because Blizzard, for the past, like, four and a half, five and a half years, have always been like, we don't like talking to the community. Screw the community. I hate the community. You know, stuff like that. So it's like, uh, it's weird for them to, like turn around and say like yeah we work with the community on this so and that, i guess that's why the the queens finally got the transfusion removed off creep so yeah they they were like artosis is bringing millions of people to our game by like raging which we need to we need to start working with the community. this, <laughs> man, is this man is gonna save starcraft too <laughs> uh but yeah that that's all for starcraft but in, in terms of uh valorant now the patch came out last week okay we we talked about it a little bit but now, we, we've seen the results of the patch, and the Brimstone meta is here. And it's here to stay. He's... Fucking he's Brimstone? Okay, okay, so there's a concept, there's, there's a fundamental concept in uh, shootings, uh, shooting games that uh, a lot of people, maybe some of our viewers might not know. Uh, it's called Executes, right? It's where uh, you all, your entire squad gets ready to, like, just hit a site. 
like very quickly and very fast. Okay. Yeah. And it makes it so that like one, you're a little bit less reactable and two, it makes it so that like comms on the other side for the other team is a little bit harder to read because you're all doing stuff. Right. So remember the range of his smokes got bigger and then uh, the speed at which they deploy got faster and then his stim beacon gives you a 25% speed boost. Okay. Yeah, I remember I was talking about. So Brimstone now is like the execute king. Okay? Oh, shit. You literally all just hang out before you enter a site, try to bait some stuff, right? And then you pick a different site, and then you just execute on that site. And you literally, everybody just runs in. They just run in ham. And they just like murder there. fools as they walk in. And it's actually like... It, it's really fun to watch. I haven't seen competitive games of it yet because uh, VCT is being uh, postponed a little bit because of the, the Ukraine situation. But it's very, very exciting to like see like... Now, to compare with the Astra meta, Astra would put out a star, right? And if there was a star anywhere, you'd have to stop. And you would wait for a yeah. long time. And the only time that you would cause an execute is like when you ran the clock. Yeah. But, right so it's like it's it's super fun to watch this meta unfold and honestly if you want to watch esports you should be watching valorant right now i'm i'm hyped that brimstone's even good because brimstone for a long time was treated as like oh, he's like smokes the character but like oh, he, he, he's brimstone. he's like mario in smash brothers where it's like yeah he's good but I'm no mario, mario is, a, is a war criminal actually oh <laughs> at least in recent oh, smash matt pat mother is that, mother, is that mother, you mother, matt pat yeah, no, no, truly, he was right about the lore in Smash, not about uh, not about Mario games, but that he is a fucked character. Like, like forty percent down throw, up air, up air, up air, up B, you die. Like you're just, you're just, you just explode. Uh, it's not sure it was worse, but anyway, not the point. Uh, I get what you mean though. Like he's like a default. Like he used to be like the default guy. He's like the dude. Okay, I I just pick him. He plays smokes. He has like a basic toolkit. He has a fucking laser. Kind of cool. But now he, like to think that like oh he's like he has like a a role in the game like you can actually like you know like he facilitates really really fast executes he has like really good smokes now that's super good i'm actually like really happy about that. um i'm a people, bit worried people, i assume people aren't picking omen anymore are they no they're they're, they're picking Omen. like uh specifically cloud nine they're big oh. omen pickers because they're they, they really like the the bucky oh yeah yeah because they're memers so <laughs> so they pick omen all the time so but other than that, yeah, that's that's Valorant's meta currently. Uh, uh, but... What is this one? Uh, Brimstone or no Valve Dev needed for uh, like a because we're talking about a lot of patches. This one, a, a patch now, now, Valve. Uh, now the reason why this one's interesting is because for the past like couple of years, like I believe for the past like three years, the Dota community has been desperate for more communication with Valve about their game because like Valve is a good company when it comes to their esports because they're typically hands off right yeah like they don't really care just as long as things get done you know the only time that they're hands-on is the international and that and they run the international really well but the thing is is that uh uh after a couple of years of asking for like hey can we get some communication they haven't done any communication so but about a week ago like i think about five days ago a valve dev came onto the dota 2 subreddit and was like hey we're preparing the spring cleaning patch can y'all just post like Anything you guys want done? You're fucking shitting. Yeah, dude. yeah, and it's crazy. It's like Valve is like completely silent for three years, doesn't talk to anybody. Like, like Valve devs have been known to come onto the subreddit occasionally, but it's never to like straight up ask for things that we yeah. want to get done, right? So, so it's like it's crazy that they're like spring cleaning patch. Let's let's clean up the game. Okay. Yeah, basically, that's literally what the dev did. He was like, "Yo, I'm going to Mickey D's. You want some hash browns, dog?" <laughs> that's literally what he did. Y'all want some techies, bucks? Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, it's not. It's not going to be like a balance patch. It's just a patch yeah. to make the game run better. But it's still oh, like, okay. it's still like an interesting change of pace where it's like, oh, Valve devs coming onto the subreddit to ask for help. What? That's that's actually pretty cool. I'm I'm happy it's in that capacity where it's like, oh, like just ask for what you want. We're, we might not be able to do it, but like we want to see what the community is actually like, you know, talking about right now. That's kind of cool. I actually really I, I appreciate that. That's really really awesome. 
Uh, yeah, you know, and uh, uh, Val, if you ever want to do the do that for uh, Team Fortress Two, just uh, let me know. I mean, uh, we can host another podcast. We can host it on the subreddit. You can put it on Uncle Dane's channel. We would love that. Uh, anyway, go ahead. But like, uh, what's what's crazier is that there was a post the other day about how like there was a lot of FPS issues with the game, and like oh. top comment is like, post this in the dev dev thread. Yeah. Right. And it's like it's just weird that we live in a world where like, oh, I don't have to just put my complaint into the void and hope somebody sees it i can just yeah. post it in the dev thread yeah that's kind of sick actually i'm really happy about that that's like awesome the valve for all their shortcomings does do so they, they they do a pretty good job with their esports and i'm happy to see that they're they're doing even better now like I, like i'd rather have a valve dev run my game nine times out of ten than any other dev that's basically, you know high key well uh tf2 player but like i you're kind of spitting. You're kind of spitting. I would love. I would love it if they ran everything like they ran Dota. But like you know. But you know. other than that, there was there was recently a LAN event, which was the the Galaxy Gaming Invitational, and oh, yeah. a Tier Two team came in, won that. Even though Nigma was there, like Tier One Nigma, I'm starting to think like all of our old Tier One teams are just not Tier One anymore. <laughs> Because tier two keeps just coming out of nowhere, going bam, get bodied, bam. What was the, tier one? What was the huh? name? What was the huh? name of the tier one? It was a Boom Esports. Boom Esports. Are they? It was. A, it was an American. I assume it was an American or like an American. No, no. This is a, a European event. Oh, okay. So, yeah. yeah, and like, uh, what's what's crazy about this is that one of the players on Boom Esports about like four years ago made a tweet like, "I'm never winning anything in Dota two. I'm quitting." But now he won the Nigma Galaxy Invitational. <laughs> against, high. That's actually high. Against Nigma, oh, no. and then like Team Liquid was there and stuff like that. So it's like, whoa, what the fuck? That's a big. T- that must have been a fucking like a stacked ass fucking tournament for a tier two to win. Mm-hmm. God mm-hmm. damn. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, maybe we should just start calling tier two the tier one and tier one <laughs> the tier two. Because <laughs> like. Literally, I've been watching, like, a, I haven't been watching, watching, but, like, I, I typically put them on at work, right? Yeah. And it's, like, it's just pretty unfortunate that, like, a lot of these old teams that I used to, like, really cheer for, uh, like, Nigma being one of them, because they're the old Team Liquid team, uh, are just not performing. Like, they're just not. Like, ever since COVID, like, post-COVID, they're just not performing. I think it's just because, like, one, there's less lands, so I, maybe they're just less motivated to play. Or B, they're just not playing in online tournaments enough. Because that's yeah. what happened in uh, Valorant, where like a lot of the, the Tier 1 teams were not playing in enough online tournaments. So their skill like just tanked, because they're not competing, right? Yeah. I think in a lot of games it's like that. Like I know in, in a lot of card games, it's actually a very common thing, where a lot of the uh, sort of old heads that played before, like pre-COVID, and they were like really good in pre-COVID are like or or maybe they were playing pre-covid but they were like long time not like recent uh they've like dropped off the face of the earth because they were like well we don't want to play online it's not really how we practice like fuck this right and it's been a part of our lives for a long time like we'll put a break on it but like for a lot of the the newer players it's like oh this is my chance to like grind super duper fucking hard and like you know make a name for myself and it's like really that's really cool like i'm and i guess it's the same in, in dota kind of right it's just very interesting looking at this from an FGC point of view because if this was the FGC, online would not count for shit. Nobody would care. They'd be like, whatever. But since this is Dota, it's like, yeah. Well, with rollback, I think people are a little bit better about that now. But still, it's kind of, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I mean, that's actually really cool though. I I think I think Tier Two is winning like a lot of like bigger events is like also really hyped to see just underdog team doing well so that's really awesome uh i can't wait to see more dota events like come back with back and stuff like that. yeah yeah it's pretty disappointing that like because of the russia ukraine war that like the dpc is on hold as well so it's yeah. like it, it's just like esports can't get a break like you yeah. like like we're coming out of covid and it's like we were all hyped to see more events right then ukraine russia war and it's like oh yeah i mean that's obviously the least of the big like I, we can understand, obviously, that it's, like, not a super big, like, you know, it's, it's probably not the biggest concern in that fact. Like, like esports, oh, my God, esports are canceled. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm but, not saying, I'm not saying yeah. that I'm valuing uh, esports yeah, no, I get what over, you mean, over no. this war. It's just more so that it's, like, 
you just can't it's catch up. a break. It's like it's like it's like I'm I'm running a, a mile, right? Yeah. Yeah. Imagine me running a mile, but uh, it's like I'm running a mile, and then I I'm like about to finish up my mile time, and my boss is like, "What are you doing? Why are you stopping?" There's another half mile of that. You you, you gotta, gotta you, you gotta run three miles. What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, hopefully stuff gets resolved, soon. and it seems like it's. I mean, I don't know how much better it's getting, but hopefully stuff gets resolved soon, in like a peaceful way, for the sake of the people and for the sake of esports as well. Be really. Uh, Elden Ring. Have you played Elden Ring recently? No, actually? I haven't. I wanted to talk about it because everybody's talking about it, and I feel like it's an important thing to talk about a little bit. Fair. Um. I- my my favorite thing that came out of Elden Ring is No Maidens. I fucking love that form. It's so good. <laughs> no Maidens. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No Maidens is like one of my favorite memes that came out of it. Uh, oh, oh wait. I remember what you were talking about. Like, uh, I thought it was the fucking Mega Mind meme. No, you're talking about the fucking like your Maiden list. Yeah, yeah, well, it's the Megamind oh, meme, yeah. but it's the girl saying, like, no maidens. <laughs> Fuck, those are yeah, 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 that one's awesome. Uh, I also like, my, one of my funny, one of the funniest mechanics is, uh, there's a, there's a character in the game that's at, like, an inn, and yeah. when you hug her, because she asks for a hug, Aww. you get, you get a 5% health debuff, permanent, until you beat the game. Why? It's supposed to mean that love is for love to happen. You have to be vulnerable. Miyazaki's a fucking yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's like tiny things like that that I'm like, man, I can't wait to play this game because I feel like I feel like it's it it's the first uh, Souls like Miyazaki game that I feel like I'm going to really like because it's. It's beyond the soul basic Souls game design, which I typically I don't despise it. I just dislike it. Um, but like uh, one of the other things that uh, is really in- intriguing to me about the game is that like it it brings about this conversation among people about uh, journals and like note taking. Like, should we be giving players as much information as we have been in the past couple of years? Like, in terms of, like, how to find stuff? Yeah, because, like, in the game, there's no, like, quest journal. There's no nothing. Oh. Like, like for you to track things, you literally have to get out a pen and paper, which I know a lot of people have been doing, and just write things down. Right? And I feel like I, I would really appreciate things that went more that direction. This might be the boomer in me. Because yeah. I, I really like classic RPGs that do this type of stuff. Yeah. Where, where it's like, we really want you to do this type of thing. Because for me, I feel like it would get me more immersed in my game experience. Whereas I, I could see why other people would get annoyed. Because then they have to do extra work. But it's like, for me, like the extra work is a part of the game. Yeah. I think a lot of people compare a lot of the Dark Souls games to like classic... Like, like literally like the original Legend of Zelda game. Like um, mm. on the NES. And I think, I guess in that regard, it kind of makes sense. Like, back in the day, I know, I've heard of people that, like, made maps on, like, graphing. Like, they would literally make, map out, the, like, the, the entire world of, uh, like, Zelda 1, like, on a, on, a, on a sheet of graphing to, like, make sure that they have everything. It's kind of, it, I guess it goes back to that. And it's a shame, I guess, because in the broader gaming community, it doesn't really matter, right? Like, for, for a game like that, because it's like, okay, well, in, like, a week, someone's going to have all the quests, like, up on a game facts or up on, like, like YouTube or something, and be like, okay, here's how you do them, or here's how you know, here's where I have to go, here's what 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 it entails. So realistically, I don't think it's like a super big deal, but I think it's really cool because it means that at least for the initial period of when the game is out, you can like go and like just have your experience, and you don't have to worry about like filling out a quest log or doing anything. You're just playing the game. You're just doing your thing. You're vibing. And- exactly. <laughs> and if you want to like engage with that part of it, that's like, okay, let me complete all the quests. You can, right? But if you want to just play the game the way that you're going to end up playing it, you can do that too. So that's kind of cool. And having an open world Dark Souls game is like, it's fucking sick, dude. You can have like your own experience with how you like explore the game and interact with the game, which I think a lot of people are really enjoying. Um, uh, the other thing that I think is really interesting about Elden Ring is that like, I think Elden Ring is catching people who wouldn't necessarily play this type of game. Really? Like I was at the, at work the other day and this dude who's like, straight up a racist 
okay? Uh, he, and I, uh, he, pay, he, give, he gives my store money, so of course I'm going to have him here. But he has yeah, a Of course I'm going to take his money. He's a fucking racist. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah but it's like uh, he sat down and was talking to someone over the phone about how he was going to get Elden Ring, right? As he was like yelling like stuff like, and these are quotes. He was yelling stuff like, "Die, Russia!" Wait, 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 be careful, be careful, be careful. This is true. I'm not trying to get back. He, 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 he said, and I quote: "He said, die Russians!" As he was playing Warzone and stuff oh. like that. And, and like, I was like, "Holy shit!" But it's like he was talking to someone about how he was going to play Elden Ring, and I was like, "Dog, you just came off of Call of Duty Warzone." saying die russians you're literally not gonna play Elden ring <laughs> you're from a, he's from a, he's from a different he's from 2006 playing water yeah World yeah II. basically Earth basically Earth. and like uh it's just it's very strange that like somehow i think it's either a marketing or b somehow this game is gripping enough people that's gripping others that wouldn't necessarily be yeah gripped by this type of game I think it's also just about like how big the game is, like in terms of like player base. Like people, a lot of people have been playing the game, and I think it, whenever there's a game like that, people are always going to be like, "Oh shit, my friends are playing this game. I know a lot of people that are playing this game. Let me give it a try." And especially with the game as big as big as Elden Ring with such a lineage, right? As like you know the other Miyazaki games, it's really cool to see. Like I think it's actually really really awesome. Uh, I have to finish Dark Souls One. Is the moral of this? True, you're on that Alfredo grind that Alfredo is doing. Oh, Alfredo's doing it too? Yeah, he's he's playing Dark Souls too, and I went in there multiple times and was like, did you pirate this game, Alfredo? Because I know Alfredo doesn't have money. And he was like, <gasps> he's like, I did, but I own this game already on the on the console, and that's I bought it like, three times, and I was like, that's okay, that's fine. that's fine. As long as you own it at least once. I don't really care, but... Oh, no, I, I would tell, I would respect him for pirating it, period. Fuck. Okay. Okay. I, look, man, okay? Well, this is, we live in a society, all okay. right? Okay, I'll, I'm gonna let that slide. Okay, <laughs> just this once. Okay. If, if it's if it's a non-indie game, if it's made by a big publisher, where the money that I spend on the game will probably not go into the pocket of the lead dev, or like in the, into the dev studio at all, I don't give a fuck. Like, you're gonna make the money in, right? I, like, if I have to vote with my dollar to make sure that the game get, sells well, sure, whatever, I'll vote with my dollar if the game is that good. But like, or if it's like an indie game where I know like they'll, you know, money's going directly to them, Fuck yeah. I would never, I would never encourage someone pirate risk or anything. Like, ever. It's just not, it is wrong. Like, that game is worth every single penny that anyone has ever spent on. But, yeah. For like, I mean, it's Dark Souls 2. You know, like. Anyway. Uh, anyway. Um, piracy uh, ran over. <laughs> but that, that's all of our core topics today. Uh, so if you just wanted to join for our core session, that's all we're talking about. But now we're talking about a little bit more niche topics. Um, Let's let's talk about WoW lore because after the podcast last week, I had to I introduced you to the the stupidity that is WoW lore. Yeah. Okay. Now, did did you watch any of the videos? I did not. I've been studying for. Okay. Uh, that, that that's fair. So so the best thing about WoW lore is that it's stupid, but that's what makes it good because it makes it easier. As like I'm following the story. It makes it so so much easier to just follow it. I, oh, actually, I did watch the timeline. That was the one I was telling you about while, while we were in call. Where I'm like, oh fuck, this is uh like what the fuck was the guy's name? The big head, like the elder gods. I recognized them from Hearthstone because I played Hearthstone, and I was like, oh shit, is Yogg in this game? I'm like, yeah, that shit. Yeah, Yogg's oh. Ron and stuff like that. So like, the best thing about WoW lore is that it's super cheesy, super easy to break down, and like, s- stupid stuff happens because it's cool. And yeah. That's it. That's that's all you have to talk about. Like, like with the Yogg Saron situation, it's like, hey, what if we just put an old god underneath this entire continent, and that's the reason why everybody's like being crazy. And what's even crazier is that like they they stretch that concept even further. That in the game, there's a resource called Serenite, and Serenite is little Yogg Saron's blood. What the fuck? That's crazy. Yeah, yeah, and and the entire Ice Crown Citadel is made out of Cyanite. They just made a fucking castle out of his blood? Yeah, because he's been there for so long that he's practically a part of the Earth. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. It's like, it's stupid shit like that that's like, you know, that's actually kind of cool. Because then when you when you go into, like, ICC, it's still kind of affected by Yaxran, even though you technically killed him in Ulduar, which was a patch before ICC. 
fucking killed a continent. Yeah, exactly. Like, like shit like that is crazy. Like, uh, there, there are other things like that where it's like, uh, in the Burning Crusade, they just brought back Kalthus because he was a fan favorite, and they were like, let's just bring him back. And then they did. Yeah. Yeah, might as well. And then, like, one of the one of the best things about it, like one of the best characters in the World of Warcraft lore is uh, Garrosh, and like their entire thing with Garrosh is like, hey, what if we made this guy so openly racist and so openly like just shitty, just just like a shitty person? But the thing is, is that he's always true to that that ideal. Like that's the only thing he's doing. So it's like he's like the mo- the best antagonists in the the show. Because it's such a good story. Because he's such a strong, like, I hate everything about, like, X thing or shit like that. And, like, he's, like, one of the best antagonists. So it's, like, you should definitely read his story if you ever got time or anybody who's watching. Um, there's there's an arc where you go back in time to meet characters in Warcraft 2. And that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it doesn't. It doesn't. And, like, what's even worse is that, like... One of the characters, his name is a uh, Gromosh Hellscream, right? And I heard of him. It. Yeah, yeah, he's in, he's in Warcraft Three, but he dies in Warcraft Three. But this is oh. alternate timeline because this is back in time. <laughs> so this is alternate timeline Gromosh where he's saved by Garrosh before he kills uh, Manoroth, right? And what's even crazier about that is that uh, at the start of the the that expansion. They literally genocide the Draenei. And there's this this road called uh, Path of Glory in uh, TBC. And it's paved with bones of Draenei that they killed. Right? That's how many Draenei that they killed to create a road. And this, this road spans the entire region. Like, it's from this side all the way to this side. Right? And it takes about, like, 20 minutes to walk this road. Okay? This is a big road, and it's nothing but Draenei bones, okay? And at the end of Warlords of Draenor, Gromash is best friends with the Draenei. Well, this this is a bad example of Wild Lord because they cut that expansion a lot to work on the next expansion. Oh, that's right. So there's huge story beats that are missing from the story, right? So it's like... You went from, like, Gromosh, I want to kill all the Draenei, to, to Outland will never... Yeah, the fucking homies, dog! What the fuck do you mean? <laughs> to, like, to like Draenor will always be free or something like that. And it's like, okay, Gromosh, calm down, dog. But it's like, it, it, it's stupid things like that where they, like, go out of their way to be extra. Like, they go far out of their way to be extra. Like, for example, in Legion, the very final boss of Legion... You, you go to a planet called Argus, which is a, a, the homeland of the Draenei, right? And uh, in Warcraft Universe, some planets have a thing called a, a world soul, okay? And this world soul can become like a person, like a persona, so to speak, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Where the fuck are my glasses? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Get your glasses on, okay? But... Oh. Oh, but okay. the the Burning Legion got to this planet before everybody and corrupted the World Soul. So the final boss of Legion is literally the corrupted World Soul, and he holds a gigantic scythe, and he mows people down like this. And you have to he's kill him. He's like Death from Castlevania. Yes. What the fuck? Yes, and it's like, he's literally the planet that you're standing on, that you're killing. <laughs> okay? And it's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I assume yeah. it makes sense. Yeah, and then like at, when you kill this boss, a cinematic plays where you fight Sargeras, and Sargeras is a thing called a Titan, and Titans oh. basically are like the protectors of the universe, right? But he's a yeah. corrupted Titan, okay? Now, at the end of it, he literally pulls out his sword, and this sword is the size of like 12 planets, okay? And he stabs it into Azeroth. And you can literally fly to Silithus and see the sword stabbed into the planet. What the fuck? Okay, so so I, ho- I hope this has brought the point that WoW lore is crazy, but that's what's good about it. I mean, 
Fuck. I, I didn't watch those videos, man. What the fuck? That shit's ridiculous. Like, I, I, was, I was neglecting it just because I was like, I'm on, I'm on midterms, but I saved the playlist, and I was like, I need to watch some of these. These are great. Like, these look, these look pretty cool. And I've been to that shit. They're, like, they're, they're definitely whoa. time killers. Like, if you need to yeah. kill, like, two hours while you're doing something else, you just put it on your other monitor or whatever and just yeah. l- listen away. I'll probably listen while I'm, like, working out or, like, whatever. But, like, awesome. Like, oh, what the dead. fuck? Like, you go to a different planet, you see the sword sticking out. That's fucking sick. Does anyone ever take the sword? Yeah, okay, right. N- now, Legion happened at the end of uh, 2016, right? Yeah. No, the sword hasn't been touched. We don't know. We don't... This is this is the thing! We don't... The sword's just there. We don't know what's going on with the sword. We know that it's going to be used eventually, because it's a giant sword in yeah. Azeroth, okay? But we don't know. But it did, it did lead into the plot point of BFA, which is, like, the the blood of Azeroth was basically spilling all over the Earth, yeah. right? And it's created this resource called Azerite. So the entire expansion of BFA, you're, you're looking for this resource called Azerite. And then you're healing the wounds of Azeroth throughout that expansion, which is kind of boring. But... Well, but it's cool, cool lore-wise. But at the end of the expansion, you're fighting Nizoth, which is another old god. So, are you just fighting back. old gods in every expansion of WoW or like worlds? No, uh, old gods rarely come up. Like, uh, uh, there was the old god in vanilla, which is Cthulhu. Then there's the oh. old god in Wrath of the Lich King, which is Yog Saron. And then there's the old god in Miss of Pandaria, which is Yashiraj. But it wasn't actually Yashiraj, it was just like the remnants of Yashiraj because Yashiraj was killed. Yeah. B- before. Warcraft even started, and then uh, then in BFA we had uh, Nazoth, but it's like there's like an expansion typically between, and expansions take about two years, so it's like oh okay. well, there you go. yeah yeah you're not always fighting old gods. It's just like there's actually a really cool interview with Chris Benson where he talks about how Warcraft lore isn't necessarily like high fantasy like people say or sci-fi high fantasy. Or even just regular fantasy, he says it. He said it's like it's like a new kind of lore. It's more so like it's superhero fantasy, you know? Because you know how superheroes will have like recurring villains, and then they'll oh. have like the recurring cast of characters that deal with said villains, you know? Yeah. And then like they idolize specific characters in specific ways, and then like they're very tropey in specific ways, you know? So that and that's what he said, and I was like, "That's actually really smart." Like when you think about it, yeah, yeah, because it's like a lot of the characters are like in World of Warcraft are typically just recurring characters, like he said, and just like in every comic book, you have your recurring characters. So it's like it's a pretty interesting way of talking. I think a way to put it too would be like video game, because honestly, WoW is kind of one of the first examples. Like Warcraft in general is one of the examples of like like high like what people would think of as like high fantasy video game storytelling right so i kind of innovated the genre in that way but yeah superhero fantasy kind of fits because it's a lot of like yeah like you said like recurring characters and there's a lot of tropes used to like simplify the story in order to make it fit into the like, massive world that's really cool yeah um but yeah gosh. uh yeah. Now let's, I let's check those out and I, I recommend the stream chat everyone is in there dude you guys should check out some wild lore that shit's there's a whole playlist on youtube just that shit is godlike but uh now, uh, so time walking ended recently in World of Warcraft, and time walking is a thing where you play old dungeons, but they're scaled up to your level. We talked about this last year, right? Yeah, I believe so. And uh, it gave a lot of experience, so it made my project, because my project currently in WoW is to level up all the goblin classes, and I got up to level 50, and time walking ended, right? Because it's an event that only lasts about two weeks, right? And it's the experience gain that you get from every other source of dungeon is way lower in comparison to time walking, right? So I've, I've just put my time, my level up goblins project on pause. So now I have to move on to my other project, which is the return to wow PVP. Ooh. Okay. <laughs> now for those that don't know me, uh, before I played fighting games, uh, I played, uh, I mean, I was doing this kind of at the same time I was learning street fighter while playing World of Warcraft PvP, but I was playing mostly World of Warcraft PvP. And uh, 
World of Warcraft PvP, I think I'm going to start playing it again. And I'm just not sure what class to play. I'm thinking, I'm leaning towards Monk. But I kind of want to go back to Destro, which is like, literally like my favorite class of all time. What's a Destro? Oh, it's Monk, I get it for d d but like... It stands for Destruction Warlock, okay? So, like, Warlocks are typically characters that rely on demons, right? Yeah. But, like, Warlock purposely goes out of their way to say, like, fuck demons. I'm going to literally use... The, he Literally, they have a spell that sacrifices their demon to give them more damage. Oh, okay? so they're like, a, they're like a warlock that summons to, like... They use the summons to buff themselves. Yeah, they're literally like, I'm going to use the fell energies to make myself, like, mega powerful what? compared to everybody else. Okay, and their, their core thing is, is that they have a spell called uh, uh, Chaos Bolt. Okay, and it's this gigantic green fell energy dragon that takes about three seconds to cast, and you have to hard cast it every time. But when it hits someone, it chunks their health for a, a quarter of their HP. Like, it's a guaranteed quarter? Like, no matter what HP they're at? That's... Yeah, and it crits every time, no matter what. It always crits. Okay? And the best thing about it is, is that, like, uh, Warlock is very fun because they have a move called Fear because it just causes a fear, but the fear lasts for three seconds if they're not being damaged. And Fear and WoW is, like, it, it's, like, Fury kind of in League where they, like, run yes, away from you? where they run away from you, right? So, uh, since it lasts for three seconds, you like, a lot of the strategy is to CC your opponent for a long enough time so you can Chaos Bolt them. Right? So, yeah. like, it, it's just a super fa satisfying gameplay loop in PvP where, like, you, you start the layers up where you're dotting your person because you have a lot of damage over time stuff. And then eventually you CC them. And in WoW PvP, we have these things called trinkets where you can get rid of all CC effects. But the, the trinket will go on cooldown for about three minutes. Oh, uh, okay. Right? So it's like so, a one time, like, uh, kind of like Quicksilver Sash. It, it, it's like Burst. Oh, shit. Yeah, that's a perfect example. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's like Burst where, like, you, you press your button and you're out, you know. But it's like, the thing is, is that uh, you, you want to bait this as a Destro so then you can hit them with a good CC and then you shoot a Chaos Bullet at them. And then it's, it, it's just really fun. Like, uh... I actually have a clip on my Twitch channel back in WAD where I'm 1v2ing a, a team in, in WoW Arena PvP. And it's just super fun to like stack up like your CCs to make sure that you can get your Chaos Bolt out. And then yeah. making sure that you can live. Uh, but I haven't played WoW PvP in years. Like literally, the ca it's been so long since I've played WoW PvP that the class, all the classes have gone through reworks. Oh shit. Right? So it's like, yeah. I, Destro still plays the same because I played DPS Destro back in B, BFA, which was last expansion. But the thing is, is that I haven't done PvP. So it's like, it, it's just it's going to be like really fun. Uh, the biggest thing for me is that like, in Valorant, I can't play music while I'm grinding the game. But in WoW PvP, I can play as much music as I want. That's sick. I love it when you can do that in game. Like, in fighting games, you're, like, in training mode or whatever, or, like, that's always how. I don't actually listen to music when I play fighting games. Uh, just because I've heard that's, like, not actually good. And especially for me, I, I don't want to, like, I get really distracted super easy, so, like, I don't like worrying about that. But when you're in training mode and you have nothing better to do, like, uh, it's, like, a, a fucking... And I assume for about PvP, it's, like, kind of the same thing, where you're just like, yes, I can listen to whatever the fuck I want. Yeah, one, one of my favorite things about playing Destruction Warlock in about PvP is that uh, Destruction have a spell where they mark a target and then they can target another target and whatever spells you do to that first target will also hit your marked target. What? So you can shoot a chaos bolt and it will shoot two targets. And oh you will my. literally you will literally see two gigantic green dragon fell energy chaos bolts shoot out from your, your character and hit both targets and both targets will get chunked by a quarter of their HP. Fuck. And it's just so satisfying. It's just like, yeah. you feel like a god whenever you, you hit it. That's so sick. Holy. Is it like a super high APM game? It is. It's Think of it like Dota, but you have 40 abilities. Yeah, and you're playing like, oh my fuck god. <laughs> That's ridiculous. Your whole keyboard is basically abilities, huh? It, it, it's like, but but think of, the, think of like when you're playing the game, it's like Tekken, you know? Where it's like, 
these are the important spells that I need to think about. Oh, uh, you know? okay, I see, I see. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> a lot of it is about just mastery of like movement and like the mechanics that you like need, like not understanding what to do with your character in like di different situations, like using all the spells and like the ways that you need to, because you're not using all of them all the time. But I assume there's like situations for each. Yes, yes, and that's exactly what it is. Like, uh, like t a, a lot of the one of the one of the most basic strategies in WoW is uh, for WoW PvP is that like. Uh, paladins have a spell called blessing of protection okay and what the, it's typically known as bubble okay now the way the what it does is that it creates this this light bubble around your character and you're immune to all damage right oh shit yeah. so so a basic strategy in wow arena pvp is that you target the paladin as far as you can target him like really burst him down until he pops bubble okay and bubble yeah. is a cooldown that will be down for five minutes. Yeah. So it's like once that happens, you then switch targets because the the paladin player will then have two choices: he either heals himself or he tries to put out some damage. Okay. So it's kind of like uh, in, there's like a couple different hero shooters and stuff like that where like characters can go invincible. It's the same kind of concept, right? Where you're like you're fighting him, you're fighting him. Okay, he like popped his thing, or like he flashed, switch target, like target this other guy while he's like doing. His Yes, the, the, there's a lot of multitasking in the game as well because uh, CC is very important because everybody has CC, right? But it's yeah. like the thing is, is that this game also has healers, right? So when you're when you're targeting a DPS player, right, and you really want him dead and you've baited all the proper defensive cooldowns, it's kind of like performing an execute in Valorant where yeah. it's like, okay, I now have my entire squad CC the healer. So that we can all burst down this guy. So it's like you're doing two things at once, and it it creates this like very satisfying like I multitasked and I created a strategy and I executed that's the really strategy. Cool. That's really really fucking interesting. That actually sounds something, like something I would really like to play. Now that I, like the way you explain it, because like I like mobas, and it sounds very similar to mobas in that regard. But it's also like I feel like the feeling of it is a lot cooler than. A well, the the other thing that I really like about WoW Arena PvP is that it's quick. Matches, matches oh. typically last about three to five minutes. Huh. Oh, well, that's also really sick. So it's it's kind of like a mobile fighting game in a weird way. I wouldn't say like that, that but, but you said it. But you said it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm excited to play WoW PvP again. Probably going to stream it probably soon. Uh, yeah. It's probably, it's, it's, oh, go ahead. It's probably going to be mostly playing Battlegrounds because uh, the thing about WoW PvP is that you have to get gear first. Like PvP uh, specific gear and battlegrounds are the quickest way to get gear, so it's like okay. I'm just gonna be playing battlegrounds. But battlegrounds are fun, so yeah. All right, well, um, we'll give you the shout out at the end for your Twitch, so people, the good people, can go watch you. I will definitely, definitely be watching you as well. Um, and yeah, for me, uh, I did have a bunch of topics to talk about, and I still do. Oh but, my god, dude, I was oh so high. My god. before we started the stream. I ordered, so a couple, about a month ago, I ordered a, uh, this amazing jacket that I had my eye on. If you guys know the, uh, the man, the myth, the legend, Tim Rogers, all right, he Rogers. is a hero, all right, and, uh, also, like, back on fucking, but, uh, if you know Tim Rogers, uh, you know that he is a man of A, culture, B, class, and C, incredibly nice clothing, um, and he had a whole segment during his uh, Cyberpunk review where he talked about these like incredibly beautiful jackets um, from Taylor Toyo. Uh, it's incredible, like a really really awesome manufacturer in Japan that makes clothing. A, a bunch of different brands, uh, Taylor Toyo, Buzz Rickson, that kind of stuff. And I, at the time when the thing was released in December, I was a really big fan of his videos. Me, Bryce, Conway, all of us were like watching. Them. And um, I had just so happened to see the video about you know Taylor Toyo stuff, and I was like. I want one of these jackets, but they're like $400. Like this is really expensive. Um, but I was like, it's a quality thing. Maybe I should get it. Maybe I shouldn't. I ended up passing because I had to go to the, the in January, there was a Yu-Gi-Oh regional or a Yu-Gi-Oh uh, championship series event that I was going to go to. And I was also planning to go to Vegas. So that was going to be uh, kind of expensive. Thankfully, um, well, those got canceled sadly. And then I went online to the Toyo website because I couldn't get this out of my head, right? This jacket is like so fucking sick completely sold out because this was a limited time thing uh partnered with uh it's like uh taylor toyo partnered with um tokyo club i think is the the brand that they partnered with for this and i could not find it anywhere the only place i could find it was on ebay for like 600 700 not paying the price for it. and lo and behold 
there was a company in uh, known as Luna Shopping. They're like a second hand ish. They they deal just with like souvenir Japanese clothing, and they had it up for I think it was like forty two thousand yen or something like that, which is roughly like three hundred ninety nine dollars like USD, and they only ship to prefectures in Japan. When I checked their shipping, I was like, please. Like, I emailed them, like, do you guys ship to America? Please. I'm begging you. I will, like, pay the shipping if I have to. Just, like, I will buy it off you. It's like, if you guys can ship to America, I'm willing to do whatever. They're like, just PayPal us. It's like 4,000, 5,000 yen extra. We'll ship it to you. I was like, bro, fucking word. Let's fucking go. I asked a bunch of people. I was very nervous about it because, obviously, it's a lot of money to spend on a jacket. But being what it is, I was like, I'm going to just go for it. it. This is... Like I, I, I'm never gonna have this opportunity. Sent out the money, and I thought it was gonna be. I, I, last I checked, it was in Chicago. So today, when I heard the doorbell, I was like, "What the fuck?" What? And then I saw the Buzz Rickson bag, I, I, like the box. I was like, "Bruh, you're fucking <laughs> shitting me." Bro. This is fucking awesome. It's like, yeah. So it's a really nice like material and stuff, and it's like perfectly sized. Though it'd be a little bit too small, and it's like double sided too, which is what I love about it. It has this like side where it's a. Uh, so this one is obviously the lucky seventh one with the girl and the dragons. And then this one, it has a giant eagle, like a golden eagle. <laughs> and the front of it is like, where is it? Hello. The front has like these eagles on it with like halos. And then the back, it says Japan. And it is fucking awesome. I am like over the moon about this right now. So the only place I don't want to wear it is my card shop to work. But I feel like if I keep it on the entire day, it won't get damaged. So I might end up wearing because I'm I'm just, I'm so happy about this right now. Definitely a worthwhile purchase. And um, if you guys do end up wanting to pick up jackets like that, please let me know. I'm willing to help. They are. Uh, I've been told that they're very much so worth the investment. I have to see it long term. But uh, yeah, I'm, I'm over the moon about that. There's been a lot of good stuff this week, and that was that was that, that's been that was, that was really cool. That's number one. Yeah. If I ever go, if you guys ever see me in the top eight of any bracket ever, I'm wearing that. Uh, you, all, you, all need, you need like like big sunglasses now like this big oh i used to have um there's a, a poster song from when i used to do, um productions at my school i used to do the newscast at my school and i had these uh heart-shaped glasses someone made this oh my like, god and i used to have those heart-shaped glasses um but i gave them out to um an old uh like a friend of mine and sadly i don't talk to that person anymore, so i don't have those glasses but, uh, oh, hold on, okay. I gave him to my ex, but, uh, you know, I didn't get him back. So, you know, it happens. But I can, I'm, I'm going to probably go buy, buy those because they sell them at the little mall area, like the strip mall area. Near. So I'm, I might go buy some more of those to wear with that jacket and, like. Hell yeah. It's over, dude. Fuck. Um, but, yeah, I'm really happy about that. Also, I don't know if you heard, but uh, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, All-Star Battle R. <sighs> Now, I know what you were thinking, you know, maybe Persona 5 Arena. What, what am I thinking? What am I thinking? I know you thought Persona 5 Arena would save the FGC, right? Just like how it saved Jazz and the color red. But no. No. It's actually JoJo's. <laughs> oh now, I don't know if, if you know the lore about this. I don't know if... I this know is a 3D fighting game on the PS3, right? Yes. Though there's two JoJo, like, 3D fighting games. There's All-Star Battle, which plays very much so like a, a typical, like, fighter... It has like stepping and stuff like that, but it's it's very much so like a, a, a 2D fighter, like in a lot of its ways. Um, there's Eyes of Heaven, which is like a basically it's a but with like two characters. That's that one's not really super competitive. But the thing that's hype about All Star Battle. Now I don't know if you know the lore, but when this game got announced, the original version, uh, I think it was like 2012, 2013. Uh, everyone was hyped. They bought the game day one. It, it was like one of the most pre-ordered games ever. They bought it. And immediately refunded the game because it was dog shit. <laughs> 30 FPS. The game was full of infinites. There's a character that's on a horse, and you can't hit him with lows when he's on the horse. What? Yeah, it's stupid as fuck. It's 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 a very janky game. Um, it, it so in Japan, it people immediately returned it like day one, and there was just like there was like way too many copies. That they knew, then starts to know what to do. They're basically giving it away, and. There is a scene, though. In the West, there is a scene online that plays the game, right? Originally, it was on the PS3 version. They emulated the game, too. And then now, they modded the game on an emulated copy to uh, basically make it so that... Um, whatchamacallit? Like, 
they have like a newer version that like you know runs at 60 fps and stuff like that on a mod basically on an emulator right in order to make the game like competitive it's still cool it's really cool a lot of people like the game or there's there's a community for it uh not as big as i want to say like um the other jojo's game on fightcade uh fuck heritage future that game is a little bit bigger scene just it's on fightcade it's a little bit easier to access but you know all-star battle had its players and if you're a fan of jojo's incredible game there's like so many deep cut references so much cool shit it's awesome um the only problem with it yeah was like 30 fps now they announced jojo's all-star battle r now everybody that i knew was fucking hype about the game you know because everyone loves jojo's right bryce you love jojo you're a big fan of jojo's right uh <laughs> he doesn't like jojo's chat but um <laughs> let's go but um i was actually not hyped for the game surprisingly i was like i don't really care because i'm not gonna play a 30 fps fighting game all right I, look i love kusoge kusoge that's my lifeblood right i love that shit i'm not gonna play a 30 fps game you can't see, don't find me doing that shit. that's that's trash but you know i was maybe i'm like maybe i'll buy the game turns out actually it's not just a shitty cash grab they Upped it to 60 FPS. That was the first thing they know. They're like, we're making a 60 FPS game. We're like, sick. Um, they're putting a bunch of new characters, a bunch of new stages. They're updating the engine. They're making a bunch of gameplay adjustments. What the fuck? That's sick. Now, the only hope is that the All-Star Battle R, the R in the name stands for rollback. If the R in the name stands for rollback, <laughs> is safe. Free. Li- we have be- JoJo's will have taken over the anime. I, I, take, it, I, take, I, t- I take it back. I take it back. You're, you're, you're huffing the po- copium for this. No, not, no. not for the no, uh, what you were talking about earlier. You're huffing the copium for this. We don't know what the R stands for, okay? Maybe the <laughs> oh R stands God. for rollback, okay? We're, we're praying. We're praying out here. The JoJo's fans, I need you guys to put your hands in the air. Channel all of your energy. <laughs> Give it to Araki right now. No, I'm playing. Um, for, for realsies, though, I do hope the game gets rollback. Like, seriously. I think it, it has a chance just because, um, like, I think it would actually be really cool to see and it would give it a little bit bigger of a competitive presence. But even if it doesn't, the game is really cool. Launching on Steam, I think in early fall of 2022 was the early announcement date. And if you're a fan of JoJo's, I would definitely recommend it. I know I will most likely be picking it because of how, like, how hype it is. Um, and yeah, it's it's a really cool game, and it had a lot of really cool ideas as well for a fighter. Like if you taunt while your opponent's knocked down, you give up Oki, but you get a buff. So it's third strike. No, 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 no. But it's not like a like the game freeze frames, zooms in, your character says a line, and your opponent has like a little cut in of like them being shocked as fuck. It's sick. It's actually hype as fuck. And like you can, uh, but the only problem was that there was just a lot of infinites and a lot of like really like. The game was not really super well balanced. Yeah. So like you would have people juggling people forever. You'd have like a lot of like dumb bullshit in the game. But the game was really cool. Like the actual like style of the game, the way the game played, the way it looked. It was. Just I, I heard. I heard the word infinite. I was like, no wonder you like this game. I don't. I didn't even like the game. I just thought it was cool. I love JoJo's. Like I, if it's if there needs to be a game like a really good two D fighting game, like a DBFZ kind of style game for JoJo's, that shit would be incredible. That shit would sell millions. Like I don't. I don't know why it hasn't happened. But you know, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. I can. I'll would would it sell millions? I feel like they're overestimating how how popular JoJo's is. Bryce, you don't understand. If you think that JoJo's is popular in America, bro, it like it is popular so like it's so fucking popular everywhere in the world. In Japan, that shit would sell millions easily. Not even no questions asked. They should make a One Piece fighter, but that's. Uh. <sighs> You and your One Piece fighter shenanigans. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. A Naruto fighters. My bad. They should oh, make it about Ash. What? What? A Naruto a, what? Oh, my interest is peaked. <laughs> Naruto <laughs> fighter, you say? Oh God. All right. We should have a conversation about that on a different podcast where we just talk, talk, talk some shit about how fucking because they're gonna announce it at some point. There's gonna be a new anime fight, right? Like a I new mean, like at Evo. Like it's either gonna be DBFZ two. Or it's going to be some new... But they're, make new, a new, they're not going to announce a new Arxis game at Evo. They're already making fucking DNF Duel. DNF Duel is practically done. Did you not play the beta? I did play the beta. But yeah, like... It's practically done. Like, you look at that game and it's like... It literally just needs... They need to clean up the rollback a little bit. And then they need to like... More features in the game, right? And then they need to put single player features. And remember the beta was like, what, like five months ago? True, true, but... Like, the game's practically done, like... Yeah, but, I mean, like, I still think they... 
it would be a little bit hard to support, especially if they're still supporting DBFZ. And... But are I think they, if they're... Are they supporting DBFZ? But they just released a new character. A character... Oh. One character past a year that had no DLC. That's right. That's... You're fine. Yeah I, yeah, I think you're right on that one. But um, it would be cool. I think they should. And for me, I think it, I would love to see uh, like a 100x101 or a JoJo's game. I would. I, I don't know how they would do a high Q one, but if they did a high Q Fighter Z, I. The biggest I thing for me is that like back in the day, there used to be a game called Stadium D O N. Okay, only true weebs know about this game. Okay, it's a game on the GameCube, and it has gameplay similar to Smash Brothers. And uh, it's it's basically all the Shonen Jump, like characters, oh, but shit. but in like a Smash Brothers type of thing. I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm, they should just make Stadium D.O.N. except it's a traditional fighter. Well, like a big shonen, like multi license. Oh, well, of course. I mean, we already have it. It's called Jump Force. Oh, you know, <laughs> how, can we go one podcast without mentioning Jump Force? No, oh, absolutely. Not. It's is, the best. Is it possible? Oh my god. No, high key though. You're you're kind of spitting. I because they should like, make it. Because it's like, I feel like after DBFC, they kind of opened Pandora's box where like everybody wants them to make a, a game about yeah. their anime, but it's like they can't do about every single anime have their own like high quality fighting game that they support for years. Yeah. It's, it's better to just make it like this where it's like all-star battle. Like it's every character, every favorite character from every game. You want to play as Naruto teaming up with a Goku? Go ahead. You want to play as Goku teaming up with Luffy? There you go. Yeah. You know? Well, I mean, you already have that Super Smash Flash too, right? You know, I mean, you mean in like a, you know, not a platform. I, I swear to God, every single time that we talk about these games, you're just like, what's the most cursed game I can bring up? That's the game. That game is not even cursed, Price. That game yeah, is it good. Is. Yeah, it is. It's so cursed. It's like they used to try their their game design used to be like more focused on like melee game design, and then Smash Ultimate came out, and they're like, oh, let's make it more like Smash Ultimate, and then they did, and it was unfortunate. It's okay. I'm waiting for Frame Maker. Frame Maker's waiting. For that game I, is gonna be sick. I was very excited for Smash Flash because they had this feature called expansion packs that they were developing for the game. They're basically like wad packs, kind of like oh, a, yeah. the, kind of like the custom characters in Rivals of Aether, mm. but, but they discontinued the feature. Oh, that's yeah, I, I was very excited because there was a Yu-Gi-Oh character on the expansion pack forums, and I would go back to that forum every week to check if there was any updates on that character. And then they discontinued the feature. Do you know how heartbroken my 14-year-old heart was? Seto Kaiba in Super Smash Bros. Exactly, exactly. Do you see the point here? Ooh, he, oh. he, the Yu-Gi-Oh character had a mechanic where his down B was I set a card face down. And you could press the down B again. It would activate the, the face card, down, card. And it would be like a random like trap effect that would help, that would help you. That's so cool. Yeah, and then, then, then his, so like, cool. his, his, like, neutral B would, like, summon a random character. It was awesome. It was sick as fuck. Cool. What the fuck? Oh, and okay. I got robbed. I got robbed of this experience. No, I Smash feel robbed. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. I got I robbed. Well, actually, speaking on, speaking on, like, how there's a lot of anime games that, like, you know, we would like to see. There was, like, this thing that I was thinking about, too, with Evo, where it's, like, there's, like, too many games out now. Like, it's ridiculous. My, there, I was actually listening to a podcast the last night about this, about how, like, I don't think it's too many games. I think it's just entertainment in general has become easier to reach and has become, like, s like solidly good. Like, it's solidly, like, solidified as, like, quality content, right? Yeah. So it's, like, your, your time is being, like, stretched along all these things, right? Like... For example, the new teaser trailer for the Obi-Wan Kenobi show yeah. came out, right? And I'm hyped for that, right? But the thing is, is that, like, I then have to fit Obi-Wan Kenobi with KOF. Uh, wow. Uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi itself. And then, like, potentially another season of The Mandalorian. I have to fit all these things in, and I have to work my job. So yeah, it's the like, work job I should do, like, yeah. It's tough. Yeah, so it's like, there's, like, so many, like, high-quality, like, things coming out right now that it's pretty tough dude i still haven't seen the star wars anime you don't have any idea how hype i was for that shit i was like bro this is gonna be great and i just haven't the star wars anime is really good you're actually fucking up for bro i know i was like bro this is what bro word i should watch this i i have 
That's like, it's like so pain. I don't know why I haven't done it. I should. But for me, it was like just one of those things where I'm like, man, I'm so hyped to play Persona. Let's fucking go. And then I'm like, Skullgirls is really good right now. Oh, fucking like, it's awesome. It sucks. sucks. Like, dude, so there's so many good fighting games out right now. And I'm like, bro, I want to play all of them. But I I literally can't. Like, if I want to improve at Persona, if I want to like, you know, put time into a game and like get better at it, I, I have to just, you know, I have to stick stick with it and be disciplined. Right? And nothing wrong with sort of like, I, I don't have any problem with Persona or with any of the games I'm playing. It's just that, like, it's hard to like stick with something when there's so many good options and so many cool, so much cool shit going on. Or like Melty as well. I'm like, you know, Melty's really cool. Like, I really like Melty. I think it's a fucking game. Love to play it more. I'm playing a bunch of other fucking games. I can't right now. And I have a job. I have school. I have shit to do. It's just, it's, you know, it's not really feasible with my time. I love it. I think it's at the end of the day, I can, I can, like, non selfishly, if I look at it objectively, I'm really happy that there's a lot of fighting games out right now because that means that whatever game you want to play, it probably exists and it's probably really good. Um, unless you want to play Million Arthur Arcana Blood. Um, Fuck you, Square. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I basically had to make the, like, the executive decision to play less Valorant recently, which is unfortunate yeah. for me, but because uh, like I was making too much noise for my uh, siblings oh. so it's like and Valorant's a game where you have to have communication so that's why I started playing WoW but it's like it's just unfortunate that like there are so many things that I want to be involved in and I can't just have the time to be involved in all of them yeah that's just kind of the, the struggles of modern life but you know like we'll make oh, I'm just happy that we have so many good things to like enjoy in the first place that's also just a, a, a thing to think about yeah, yeah, and it's, like, especially good because, like, I know the past two years for gaming has been slow. Like, it's been so slow yeah. that they're actually putting more PS4s in production this year. Like, yeah. Wow. Yeah, did you look, did you hear about that article? No, that actually is really awesome. Yeah, yeah, they're putting more PS4s out because people can't get PS5s, right? Yeah. So it's, like, uh, they're, they're putting out more PS4s, so it's, like... Gaming has just been kind of slow the past few years, and now all of a sudden it's explosively exciting again because yeah. I, the the pandemic has lessened, everybody's vaccinated, and now it's like we can finally get back to like that cycle of like things coming out. Maybe it's because we were so used to having so much time during the pandemic that yeah. now that it's post pandemic, like I mean I don't want to say post pandemic, but we're getting there. We're almost post pandemic, yeah. so it's like we're not used to having all this stuff. They to do, do, yeah. I think, yeah, but I mean, yeah, like honestly with, with the way it's been now, it's like, it feels like there's a lot more shit that just going on. Like there's more events opening up. There's a ton of shit going on. Like for me, I was going to talk, I, I didn't really bring this up in the, in the, in the document, but I'm getting really back into Vanguard again. Uh, and there's been events opening up again. I've never played an offline Vanguard event, like Cardfight Vanguard as yeah. card I'm getting into. And I'm really excited to be able to go to like a big event and like interact with the community. The community I've never been like really talked to him. Um, and yeah, it was just really cool. But it's like, yeah, again, it's like, fuck. Where are we going to find the time to do all the shit that we want to do? Well, um, I think lastly, the last thing I wanted to touch on was, uh, like you said about streaming uh, WoW PvP, um, I'm going to be streaming Persona. And I know I talked to you about this, but like, it'd be nice to have this on the stream. I will be streaming Persona from the day it launches to uh, probably like at least every day a little bit, or maybe like every other day a little bit. Um, I'm hoping to like do like, you know, put a lot of time into that game and just play a ton of games on stream um just with people in the chat or like you know people who are also like you know doing games doing lobbies and stuff um it's just something i want to put a lot of time into because i've dream for a long time and i think i love streaming like i've been enjoying doing this because like being a personality and like talking and like, you know doing all this stuff is like it just home to me it's just because I've, I've been doing that throughout like all of high school and it, like you know really impacted me that like that way and also really loved streaming um rep tuesdays when it was going on uh, that was really all always really awesome so i thought like you know may as well incorporate it even if Persona's in delay, you know, my stream will always not never be in delay. You're, or at least you're, you're, you're locking that down. Yeah. Your stream has yeah. rollback, so what? watch his stream. His stream has rollback. My stream has rollback. Don't play Persona, but I watch my stream. That's... <laughs> God damn it. But yeah, um, I think that's everything for for today. Did you have anything else you wanted to add? Not really. Just like i guess we're both streaming again which is yeah. weird i never i never thought i would be back on this like hey i kind of want to stream more because like i feel like Very wow good. wow is a very easy game for me to stream especially because now i recently upgraded my pc so i have an easier time with streaming now 
Huh? I should get on that actually. I just realized like I should probably upgrade my PC too cuz uh I haven't upgraded my I haven't gotten a new PC. It's been like 4 years. Something like that. 3 4 years and my PC was already kind of like Ugh. and it's been like crashing and shit like that sometimes so I should probably try to get it fixed or like get it, get it sort of but, like. but yeah, it's pretty cool that we're both like, "Hey, maybe we should stream." Thinking yeah. That that's actually going to be hype. Uh, you know, my, grow the my, podcast. My, my thing for me is that like I'm not sure if I should stream on YouTube or Twitch. I kind of want to do YouTube, but I already have a decent following on on Twitch. I think either way you're probably going to do okay. It's just more that like could you do both? Is it possible to do both? It is possible, but I don't think I have the bandwidth to to do both. Oh, yeah, cuz you're separate. Fuck. That's yeah. I kind of want to do, uh, do, uh, do YouTube because I like having easier VODs. Yeah, you don't have to like download the clip and then upload the VOD. You're just like one to one. Yeah. Yeah, I just go to YouTube and it's there. Yep. Yeah. Well, wherever you do stream, where can people find you on YouTube or on Twitch? Uh, on YouTube, I am Mr. Bounty X Hunted. I'll probably upload this uh, episode right after this. So if you missed some of this, you can see it on my YouTube channel. And then I'm also on Twitch, which is Bounty X Hunted, and you can find me on other social medias underneath that handle as well. Fabulous. And for me, uh, you guys, as you guys probably know, you know, Dopey underscore 23 on Twitch. And then, or is it just Dopey 23? I always forget my fucking. Yeah, Dopey underscore 23 on Twitch, as you guys are watching here. Um, my YouTube is, uh, I think it's just Dopey 23. Uh, my Twitter, Shutterbro23. Uh, I usually just tweet out these episodes, but when I'm going live on Persona, I'll definitely be t- uh, tweeting those out. And, you know, if you're coming here from YouTube, check me out on Twitch. I'll be, I'll be live on Persona after the 16th. And, we stream these every week at some point in the week. Uh, if you follow us on Twitter, you'll see. Yeah. Um, yeah, and YouTube is the same thing. Don't be underscore 20. So check us out. Check us both out. And yeah, I guess this has been the episode seven of the Frame Trap podcast. I've been Dopio, Daniel. And, and uh, I've been Bounty. So yeah. yeah, I hope to see you all next week. Yep. Take care, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Take care.